The United Nations has called on the government of Nigeria to restore law and order in the northeast of that country and investigate mass killings alleged to have been carried out by the militant group Boko Haram. Boko Haram is the same lot that last spring kidnapped 276 girls, most of whom have never been recovered. This January, while world attention was focused on the killings in Paris, Boko Haram waged an assault on two northern towns. Satellite imagery shows them razed to the ground. The Nigerian government says 150. Amnesty International says as many as 2,000 or more were left dead. The exact numbers of dead are hard to confirm, of course, but one thing is pretty certain. If profits, not poor people's lives, were at stake, the world would hardly be silent. Black lives don't matter as much as white to the West, that's clear, but everywhere, hashtag profits matter most. Western media stereotypes notwithstanding, Nigeria is not some tin pot state. The largest economy on the continent, a founding member of OPEC, one of the world's leading oil producers, Nigeria's seen billions of oil dollars flow through it. The lion's share to global corporations. But the oil giants have kicked back plenty to Nigerian leaders in exchange for protection of their interests. The military's annual budget exceeds $6 billion, and they've never been reluctant to use it to protect oil profits. In the mid-1990s, for example, when demonstrations by the people of Ogoniland threatened to shut down oil production in the south, much of the Niger Delta was simply put under military rule, and maintaining law and order led to the killing of leading Ogoni activists, including Ken Sarawiwa and others. When a Chevron platform was occupied, the company hired a helicopter to fly armed forces in. Two unarmed protesters were shot dead. So what's the world to do? Nigerians are going to the polls in mid-February, and that could bring about a change. But it's not the government of Nigeria that's poor only the vast majority of its people. More international oil money going to taxes and things like those that the Ogoni activists were asking for, schools, clean water, and health care, might have led to more democracy and less corruption. Maybe less of that military budget would be ending up now in generals' pockets. If poverty was a bit less dire and popular discontent a bit less severe, I don't know, the place today just might be less fertile territory for maniacs promising vengeance. Would the West care more if Nigerians were white? No doubt. But for sure, if you could make money from schoolgirls, the most powerful people in the world would be all over this. Write to me, tell me what you think. Laura at grittv.org. And thanks.